Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be discussing headlight chemistry and a couple other things about headlights, like which ones are pains in the ass like this, and also show you how to take these pains in the ass lights and turn them into these amazing lights. Picture perfect, better than the day they rolled off the lot. Damn, it looks Look like a that. water or a mirror or something. Like a water mirror. Perfect. Ultra perfection. Beautiful aesthetic. And work ten times better than they probably should. Stay tuned. The Headlight Restoration Pro. The future of Headlight Restoration. Let's get down to business. This is a 2006 Lexus GS350. Um, this is one of the cars that you know you gotta you gotta kind of put a little bit of markup on. Not only is it um, a very old vehicle, which means it's gonna have solidified uh, damage, but check this out. You see that there? You need this where I'm from. You need a, a Virage. Any headlight restore should have a virage of covering or portable covering. Uh, why? Especially where I'm at or where I'm located at in the West Coast. Uh, it gets uh, temperatures up to 116. Uh, and this particular day was 109 uh, at the time when I did this light. Um, this is why you can kind of tell and see how bad of lights I'm doing on my videos all the time because it's a damn desert. It's a, it's a very hot out here. It's tropical, but it, it, you know, it's beautiful. Everybody wants to live here, but it is terribly hot, like hot, like you don't even want to go outside ever in the summer at least every other part of the uh, year is beautiful but three months of the year it's a fucking nightmare i hate it um and if i didn't have to come outside to work in it i wouldn't do it it's literally 108 right now outside uh but i have my canopy up and it just feels to me like a like a brisk 85 or something uh it's no it's mostly sun hot out here wherever i'm at i uh, don't disclose that information um, but, you know, I am in California. That's as close as I will tell you on the West Coast. Uh, the beautiful, uh, overpriced California um, is where I am located, born and raised. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of headlight restore business out here. A lot of hot headlight restorations needed. And a lot of paint work needed out here just because it's uh, it's a damn oven, uh, you know, three, four months out of the year. Um Anyways, uh, this lady called me as an emergency as um, she wrecked her main car and uh, I believe her uh, friend or brother or something let her use his um, second car and uh, she wore glasses, had astigmatism uh, pretty bad and uh, you know wore contacts and stuff like that um, and she could not see and she worked at night, okay? So she called me first thing in the morning, uh, you know, actually woke me up out of bed and uh, I told her it was okay, and she's like, I really need my, you know, these lights done because I cannot see, and it, I feel unsafe, and can you come out today, this morning, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, yeah, for sure, let me get up, let me get dressed, I'm on the way, right? Uh, you know, I'm a headlight hero, that's what headlight heroes do, right? <laughs> but anyways, um, these lights, as you see, are a pain in the butt. They're a pain in the butt, uh, you know, somewhat to do because there's two separate lights um not so much the work on the light is a pain in the ass but what comes before i didn't tape it i mean i didn't show you on here but the tape off is miserable to tape this off it takes about three times longer than a regular light because you're taping off two lights that are close to each other and there's a couple cars that are like this um and there's even more cars that are just a pain in the ass to work on either f the physical aspect of the light or the tape off or both like these or like other ones or whatever. Um, you know, uh, there's some that are really bad. We'll go into some of those in a minute. But um, this is a uh, Lexus, like I said, 2006, and the headlights have never been restored before. So um, it's, uh, you know, moves along pretty fast. And, um, you know... Sometimes uh, doing a headlight that's never been restored before is actually easier and more pleasurable because you're not, you know, having to go through all these foreign 
um, headlight structures or foreign um, clear coats and stuff that have been implemented into the structure of the headlight meaning that um, you know aftermarket sprays or even uh, you know market sprays sprays that have came with the vehicle or came when the headlight was constructed or whatever um, they're not fully gone with this vehicle as you see it's a hundred percent gone there's no clear coat on there it has been faded away for years now so pretty much what I'm doing is removing a um, top layer of the um, headlight or the polycarbonate uh, and you know until the damage is gone and then building it back up so I'm pretty much bypassing having to do the clear coat or get the clear coat off before I can do all this it's kind of like um, you know pretty much that's what it is doing a light and uh, moving you know up a step faster so it kind of pays off when you get something like this even though this is a pain in the butt like nothing fits in here I have some um, some uh, Dremel tips and whatnot, and a actual Dremel with a um, with a uh, sanding restoration type tip to it that I can change uh, from anywhere from half an inch to one inch, whatever. But those don't even fit in here correctly, so I just do them by hand. Uh, it's very rare I have to pull those out, and I was debating to do it on this because they're in my trunk. It's very rare that I do, but um, it, it wouldn't even fit in here, so you have to do it all by hand or whatnot. Um, as I said in the uh, opener and the um, headline picture suggest this is about headlight chemistry uh, to do with the polishes or whatnot as well as just headlight chemistry in general. We'll get all to that in the uh, towards the back of the video towards the second half of the video. Uh, the first half of the video, I just want to show you, um, you know, how uh, smooth and how messed up this light is and how amazing it's going to come out looking. It's going to come out looking better than the day I rolled off the lot. And I had to explain this to a customer before. It's kind of like, you know, if you were to, um, you know, get some Jordans made or, or some, you know, regular tennis shoes made or Air Maxes or whatever. Really good shoes, right? Really good tennis shoes, right? Uh, you know, it cost them seven cents to make them and, you know, some sweatshop and Thailand disclaimer I don't really know that but I mean I just hear what everybody says and yes they do operate overseas it's cheaper you know you can pay somebody you know a couple bucks versus here somebody wants you know a hundred dollars an hour thirty dollars an hour and you know they're not satisfied but over there they're really happy to be getting the work and it's a lot of money you know people say oh it's seven bucks you know they're paying seven bucks for those workers but it's like over there seven bucks is thirty bucks so anyways not getting into any of that um uh, it's it's like if you bought one of those pair of shoes, really nice, whatever. But if you paid an actual shoemaker to make you a pair of fine Italian leather shoes to fit your feet perfect, I mean, there's there's no comparison really. It's it's more intricate. Or you had like you know you bought a sweater off the rack at Macy's or wherever you shop, Burlington or whatever the hell you get, right? Or you have you know some lady you know who who's been making sweaters for uh you know years for 20 30 years and make you a sweater by hand you're right one's gonna be a lot nicer right and it's probably gonna be worth a lot more uh it's just because that factor that uh you know this is 90 percent 95 percent or more made by um machines just put together boom boom pressed out i've watched it in person i've watched it uh, on film dozens of times in different factories and it's all the same it's different machines but all they all do the same thing all right and it's pretty much a process of you know a system of uh of a injection machine that uh he, you know heats up in a crucible all the uh, plastic granulates or the polycarbonate granulates, they heat them up until they're liquid. It goes into this high-powered, um, heat-resistant uh, injection system, and they inject into a mold, just like um, if you've ever seen one of those molds that make special ice cubes or whatever, or, um, or you know, makes, you know, any kind of mold that you could think of. Um, it, it's pretty much like that, but it's a hard mold, and it presses uh, with heat and um, a lot of pressure, and it molds this plastic into place. That's why it's often called uh, injection mold in plastic, or it's called um, uh, thermoplastic. Uh, 
or thermal expansion plastic or there's all kind of different things uh it is polycarbonate but polycarbonate is just a form of plastic that's like saying let's go back to a shoe analogy that's just like saying nike you know or or not better yet that's like saying um running shoes or basketball shoes or you know dance shoes they're all different kind of shoes okay they're all the same they're all plastics this one is just a space age plastic um, or whatnot, super hard and super shatterproof compared to glass, uh, and lasts a long time. You know, it's like it's a Superman plastic. You know, the Superman has one, you know, one little tiny stupid thing that, you know, fucks him up all the time. These, you know, with these, uh, it's the UVs from the sun. But on a, uh, another, uh, chemistry note here, uh, you know, that will help you understand later on and why uh, other things work so well with these lights, uh, the oil based of these lights, uh, the oil base works on these lights so well is because these are pretty much made, the process they make them, uh, they pretty much start as fuels, as different fuels, okay, like fossil fuels, like like um, when I say fuels, I mean like a gas, like a kerosene, like a diesel fuel, okay? Similar products like that, okay? Like a, um, a composite, you know, of these different type of oils that are put through a chemical process and hardened into this or made into little granulates that's, that are then pressed into molds, like I said before. I don't want to repeat myself, but uh, it's a really advanced process and I try to keep it... Um, kind of PG-13 on the egghead shit because I want everybody to understand it. I don't want to bore you of what the XYs and the, you know, the, the H2, this and that, this and that. The hydro, the polycarbon, you know, the hydrocarbon is what it's from and all this shit like this. I can say all these words and names and explain to you how it is. But nine times out of ten, most people don't care about that stuff. They have no use for it. They just want a brief description. So that's how I try to keep it. So in a nutshell, uh, headlights itself, the polycarbonate itself, is uh, oil-based. It's a derivative of different composites of oil. Composite just means different ones, okay, put all together, okay, into, into one thing, which makes polycarbonate. Okay, this is why oil-based substances towards the end when you're doing polishes react to it so well and like i said this is why these little little gimmick tricks and people trying to fool you i can put orange juice on the light with this and that and or i can put you know wd-40 or whatever or whatever they're doing it's an old trick and everybody should know now public service announcement the shit don't work it'll work visually to your eye it'll make it look better of course it'll never make it look like this like make it look like one of my lights or a professional headlight restores lights never why because it's just impossible right so they try to fool you and like hey look at this look at this boom boom and they cut the camera off and 10 minutes later it's gonna look like shit it's gonna be worse but it's gonna have all kind of residue dried in there or whatever or even a couple of you know days or 24 hours or something like that it just doesn't evaporate uh, as fast as water as you've seen how uh, you know this gets real clear when you get it wet it does, hasn't evaporated as quick with water or liquids uh, because oil does not evaporate you know evaporates about uh, you know fuck, like 10,000 times slower than water so it's okay so let's look at this light here this is a 2022 Pathfinder this is the kind of nightmarish shit I see in my dreams. I saw one a couple weeks ago, and I was like, that's going to go bad sooner or later, and someone's going to call me for this shit. But anyways, starting off here, we got the Chemical Guys Restore, which is an awesome product for my method. Okay, it fits in perfect. It's uh, It's been experimenting with both of these guys here, and I noticed two things that kind of counteract each other. Okay, both of them are remarkable at scratch removal, but both of these on this video here received five star ratings, um, you know, best in two different categories okay this one here was uh pretty much the oil that's in it it's uh heavily oil based and the oil that's in it reacts really well with the light the other one the 3m was uh you know it only received like three stars or something like that uh but it's received um a sidebar note of the best 
a cutter in the the mix and all of the things I tested that day with that video um, it cuts like crazy it gets things clear in a different way and not in the way of oil or whatever it had it's you know it's water based so there's really not much oil in it but it cuts the hell out of stuff it gets all the scratches out is crazy so I decided Damn, to combine both uh, when I when you first start testing out something like this combinations uh, chemistry wise or whatever and combining them uh, it's a good starting point to do 50-50. So what I did right here is pretty much 50-50 per, uh, you know, milliliters or volume or whatever that I put on the pad. I eyeballed it. So it's roughly 50-50. Um, I'm still getting uh, to the point where I'm trying to figure out how much I need to get uh, one light done or the average light done or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's a pro tip right there. You got to uh, tape off your batteries so you know which ones are bad, being that I have about eight of them in here. So got to uh, keep track of them. It sucks to pull out one that's already been spent up, but you don't know because it's not marked. But anyways, um, if you can't see already how amazing uh, the combination of these are, it's, it's insane. Um, either one of them are really good standalone. Okay, the Chemical Guys is excellent standalone. And the 3M, you know, once again, going to reiterate, is the best one I've seen that uh, it removes scratches or whatnot from the headlight surface. Okay, it's, um, you know, uh, and it can be used more than uh, just on headlights. But anyways, I got the idea because one is water-based, okay? I dinged it because it's, it's too water-based, um, you know, in my opinion, for, uh, you know, headlight work. I mean, you can use it for headlight work, but it is better if it had, it would work so much better if it had um, a certain measure of oil in it. So, you know, I got the idea of this one is so heavily endowed with this oil, you know, maybe a little bit too much to mix them both. Because I knew that the 3M would act like a catalyst, uh, just means like a carrier of whatever else you put with it because it's so water-based, it's so fluffy and water-based. So I got the idea, um, you know, I, I kind of see things and I see loopholes and patterns with stuff from my little scientific tests and stuff like that. So immediately when I used them both, I thought these two together would be better than um, alone with each other or damn near close to whichever is the, um, the best way. Um, because I'm not gonna shit you, the uh, chemical guys really works like crazy with this method and I'm really feeling how it works. Uh, sooner or later, I'll be going back to my um, majority of my videos or whatever, or, you know, I haven't decided yet, but we'll be going back to my uh, 3M headlight cleaner and uh, polish uh, just because I have a shitload. I have enough to last me a couple years, um, you know, and, you know, that's just, there's nothing really beating that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing beating that. These ones are trying to compare to that. Okay, they're on that level. Some of these are on that level, uh, like this chemical guys, and then the uh, 3M uh, with the cutting, of course. Um, but it's such a complete product, um, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't need anything else. So I'm going to be going back to that. But with this, um, it's just gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. Something else. Look at this real quick. Uh, just the other day, I saw one of these GMC trucks. This is like a 2020 or whatever, and its headlights were going bad. And uh, I usually leave cards and windows when I see somebody needs some help. You know, maybe they might want to hire me to do, uh, you know, that's another pro tip. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, I passed up on this one because I was like, shit, I don't even want to do that, man. I want money, but like, damn, that's a pain in the ass. And they'll probably pay good. They got a really nice, expensive car, but like... I'm just certain lights that are out right now that are going to be coming up on the roster next year or the year after. I'm just not looking forward to doing them just because they're they're making these lights so crazy that, you know, you're going to, you know, have to re-educate yourself on some of these angles and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down for a challenge, but I mean, I, I'd rather just have things move, you know, smoothly like most people. But, you know, I am a headlight restoration pro and, you know, I got it coming up and I already got my game plan. So just let y'all know once uh, every year there's a more um, gauntlet of newer vehicles that you're going to be doing, you know, whether it's, you know, this year I did a lot of 18s, a lot of 17s, a lot of 16s. So next year it's going to be like the same time 
time thing and the year after it's gonna you know the uh, range is just gonna push up more push up more you know to the uh present time closer to the present time and you're just gonna have more vehicles uh that are gonna need service and those are gonna be the ones sooner or later if you're still doing this um but yeah Look at this. Damn, this place looks freaking amazing. And uh, when she came out, you know, she was amazed. She was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. And she came out in the middle of this one when I was transitioning. And uh, she was looking at it. She was just staring there. And, uh, and she was just like, this is insane. I cannot believe it. And then when people see a good product, a good product sells itself. A good job sells itself. When they're sitting there looking at this light and they're looking at the other one, and and then she says, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you, you know, wherever she worked at, you know, and I gotta disclose that information. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell all the people I work with, I'm gonna send you business and this I can't even believe this is possible and you know, these lights they were telling me to replace were, you know, you know, four hundred dollars a piece plus another four hundred dollars in labor and I had to leave my car for five hours and I can't believe you could come out here and do this like this and I'm telling everybody, you know, good um you know, one of my friends told me once, good work sells itself. You know, that's why you should always uh, you know, try to be your best. You know, and and, and, and the thing is work isn't always about just how good you are. It's about how good you are overall. It's about your character. It's about your your ethics, how good you're. And people can feel that. When they come in the scene, they're seeing you work on their car. And they see, like, how good you're working, how good you're moving, and you're smiling, and you're, you're into it. They can tell that you like what you do. They can tell you're not only good at what you do, but they can feel it almost. You know, I always said human beings are psychic beings. A lot of people just don't even know. They would walk around, and they would be psychic, and they wouldn't even know it. OK, we, you, we can feel things, you know, when somebody walks by you and they're in a bad mood, you can feel it when they give you a side eye. You can feel it like, oh, shit, this was pissed. You know what I'm saying? And you can just feel it. And you get somebody walking around and just shopping at the grocery store and they're, you know, they're not even smiling or nothing and they just feel good. You can feel that. So, you know, it's all about um, confidence and it's all about, you know, how you feel about what you're doing. If you're trying to be more, you're trying to. um you know, just be better and be the best you can. People will pick up on that and that will initially get you more business than you can imagine. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and test this again on another light. That other light is done. That other video is done. Um, I'm going to try this again on this light. Uh, these other vehicles here were within the same vicinity the day later or, you know, the same day afterwards or whatnot. Um, and I decided, let me go ahead and just test this again. We're going to, we're going to come mash these up, you know, together and make another video and let people know what, you know, there's another option that came from these testings, uh, combination. And you can combine these things and do tests like this, um, anytime you want. A lot of good detailers, any good detailer, you know, there's a guy out my way. He's, um, he's uh, something like a North Cal Pro or something like that. Yeah, he seems like a cool guy. He's got bars. He's really good. And I see on his videos, he mixes different chemicals. And he is classically or professionally trained. Okay? A lot of people just know what they're doing and, and educate themselves or whatever. But this guy has been to schools and stuff like that. Um, you know, so shout out to him. Uh, but he he mixes stuff when I see on his uh, polishing pads and stuff like that there's different colors of different dots and different creams and and um, compounds and polishes okay so he's smart he knows about it you know you can if you pay attention to what you do and if you have enough feel if you have your hands in it and your mind in it you can be like this product is the shit this is amazing but it's missing something and then you have to figure out that's what skill comes in you have to figure out and the chemistry of the craft or whatever craft you're doing um, you know that's where it comes in to where you're using your mind and you're like well this one was really good but it was too watery and this one was really good but it was too airy so let me put them together and it's still not that good let me put this one in there because it's oily and then, we, then you start getting a better product you're like making your own products for your own needs Okay, through, uh, you know, a, an intelligent method of, uh, you know, pretty much chemistry. You're adding different things to get what you want, you know. But before we go any further, check out this one. This is a 2017 CRV. I do a couple of these a year, and I hate it every time. Everybody's going to have a light that they love, and they're going to have lights that they hate. This one right here 
with this uh, metal crossbar here that you can take off, but it's very dangerous to take things off because once again, they break when you're trying to take them off. Um, but they're just a pain in the ass to work around these and have to tape them off or even try to take them off. And even when you take them off, they're still a pain in the ass because it has a big gap right there. And I hate working on them. Okay, so back to this light. Look how crystal clear it is already. This is a Toyota Tacoma. Um, did this one on a 108 degree day as well. Actually, it was the same day as um, the Lexus. Uh, same day, uh, started uh, late morning to early afternoon and was working in that um, you know, 100 degree heat, it was miserable. And you see how I'm mixing this one now? There's an, there's other ways to mix it, okay? So, um, mixing it on this one, as you see, what I did is I used one product, and then I used the other one. That's one way to get your mix on. The other way is to put both products, as you saw in the first um, one that I did with the Lexus, is put both products on the pad. Okay, and there's another way to mix as well. If you find out your ratio, and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't quite mix it that way unless you just have it with 50-50 or you know what you're doing. Uh, you kind of figure out which ratio you want to go: 60-40, you know, 70-30, whatever it is. From mixing it these type of ways, or the first way with both of them on the end of the pad. Um, but anyways, the third way is to mix them all in one bottle and actually, you know, shake it up or, you know, mix it, you know, with a mixer or, you know, uh, whatever you do, whatever container you got, uh, you know, stick in there or whatever, or, uh, you know, mix it in something else, then put it in there and let it sit for a while. And uh, those are the three major ways you can mix uh, different products, okay? Uh, it all depends on, uh, you know, your skill set or how you, you know, you're comfortable with. Uh, but they'll all work. Either one of them will work, okay? I haven't done that one yet just because I am not sure which way I want to go. Uh, this is part of the testing that I'm doing uh, with these uh, things. And also, if you ever do testing like this, you know, and like I said before in other vehicles or videos, uh, you know, working on other vehicles, um, if you do any testing on a, on a live testing on a vehicle, you got to make sure that you're doing it on both lights. You don't want to do something on this light and then do totally something different on the other light. You want to keep them, you know, concurrent. You want to keep them the same, right? Because uh, it just, it's just weird. Things can wear different. Things can, you know, degrade different. Things can, you know, heat different. All kind of little things can happen. So you want to keep them uniformed. Um, with that being said, um, you know, you always want to be prepared to uh, come back and uh, redo them or do whatever you got to do to make them right if something weird happens. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, I do professional. I'm a professional and I know it's going to happen and I know it's not going to happen. And just for safe measures, you know, I always um, have test subject lights and, you know, the ones you've seen on the previous videos, they're just sitting in the backyard in the rain and the sun and the heat with uh, time stamps on them, you know, with a date written on them. So I can kind of see, you know, how they how they hold up in four months, five months, six months seven months eight months nine months ten months so on and so on a year to you know however long i usually push them out for um about a year or so just to see if it's uh you know it's got to be sellable and it's got to be um you know have a little legs on it but anyways once again this is both of these put together and look at it very nice very nice i think i'm fa i'm favoring the the mixed together version of the first one i did um, it's just a time saver and a time consumer uh, when you don't, you know, have them when you're doing one layer and then another layer over it, you know, doing one chemical, then the other chemical. It's a whole different ball game. But look how gorgeous these lights are, and they were very happy as well. Um, I also threw in a free scratch removal they were uh, inquiring about, and, and I was so happy how these came out, and I was a little bit ahead of schedule, so I went ahead and did a scratch removal as well on the house. Now that's good business, huh? Well, who, who do you want to call back? Who do you want to tell your friends about? You know what I'm saying? It, good business is infectious. Okay, good hard work is infectious. 
you know, the, it's 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 the positive things in life that are uh, in life that are infectious, not so much the negative shit. The negative shit that is infectious gives you a feeling of good positiveness, even though it is full of shit. But yeah, I throw um, when it's when it's uh, prevalent or a good idea too. I throw uh, freebies and you know promotional things to my clients all the time. You know, I'll give out shirts. I'll, you know, I'll, you know, do all kind of stuff to promote. Um, you know, when, you know, somebody's saying, okay, he did this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He even, that motherfucker's crazy. He even did the scratch removal. I was going to call him next week and pay for it. He did shit for free. I come out, my headlights are done, and the scratch is gone. <laughs> Imagine how juiced she's going to get. She's going to be like, I'm going to call him up. He's going to hook me up. And even if he doesn't, that's good business. People get excited about stuff like that, right? So I'm just saying, you know, don't be a shrewd, uh, you know, businessman. Be uh, a good businessman. That's even better. As you see, I am um, going back to putting everything uh, dabbed onto the finesse pad. Uh, both products at once uh, just because I favor it and I'm trying to figure out the formulization uh, how I should go with the 50 50 the you know 30 70 or whatever I'm trying to figure it out and this is how I, I figure it out there's no other way to really figure it out um, you know if you just want to go with 50 50 and that's good for you that's fine um, you know I, I just do a little bit more in-depth stuff there's no need to you know beat yourself to this or whatever or beat your head against it or whatever and try to find the perfect formulation 50 50 is good enough you're just gonna have to get down to how much you're using once it's 50 50 okay I'm just trying to do a little extra experiments and then see what is what if there's something better that's just the way I work you know uh, I'm a little tedious and I'm a little anal, I'm a little OCD and I just keep trying to freak things and I mean initially that's why I'm the Headlight Restoration Pro and why my skill level is so uh, high or whatnot. And I'm not tooting my own horn, I'm just, uh, you know, it's just like Bruce Lee said. Um, you know, people, you know, he said in one of the interviews, you would think I'm cocky and all this stuff like this because I'm telling you that, you know, I'm good and this and that. But if I sat here and I told you I'm no good, you would know I was full of shit, right? So, I mean, for all the haters out there, which there are plenty, I get them in my DMs. They are so mad. Like, oh, my God. If you're mad about something and somebody else, what somebody else is doing, that is a textbook hater, okay? If you're mad about your life and you're mad about, you know, how good I am at headlight registration or, you know, how successful my channel is or whatever the key may be, how I talk, how I make videos, how I joke or whatever, you're mad at yourself. You're mad with something else. Don't waste your time commenting. Just go get a life. Fix it. Do something better. Right? Don't be mad at yourself. Don't be mad. Don't be mad at me. Don't you know? Just fix it. Make yourself happy, because to to have somebody watch a whole video and then comment on it negatively when it's not even that kind of video. It's not like a social media thing. It's not. It's a how-to video. It's a. You simply just don't have to watch if you don't like it. If it's not to your liking. If you can't stand my voice but you love my work, mute me, and watch it. Right? If you want to learn, that's what this is for. If you want to be able to do it on this level, that's what it's for. And I believe anybody can do it on this level if they just listen and follow what I'm doing. But look how beautiful this is. Stay tuned for the next videos. Thank you all, and please subscribe. And don't be a hater. The Headlight Restoration Pro. The future of Headlight Restoration.